I'm a huge fan of retro gaming and it's been a really long time playing any sort of games. So I was wondering if I can build a retro gaming setup with Raspberry Pi and an old monitor. But while building, the idea just spiraled out and I had other ideas to build the retro setup, which I'll discuss in the future video. So instead of shredding down all the work I did so far, I converted the old monitor into a thin bezel secondary monitor. So without any further delay, let's get started. Already there are plenty of videos around the internet explaining how to convert the LCD panel into a monitor or a TV. So I'm going to skip some details and briefly describe how I used a similar method to build a secondary monitor. I got this LCD panel from an old LG monitor that I borrowed from a friend. If you like, you can also buy the same LCD panel directly from various vendors. But that doesn't seem too exciting and it doesn't do any justice for a DIY project. So I highly recommend getting a used monitor or a monitor with a broken display controller. That's right, I said broken display controller because we'll be using a V59 universal driver board to control the LCD panel. By which we get a variety of options like HDMI, VGA, audio port, USB media, etc. To confirm if the driver is compatible with your LCD panel, just look at the back for the model number, which will help in confirming the compatibility with the universal driver. After confirming the compatibility, make sure to get an inverter as well which will supply the power for the backlight of the LCD panel. If you like to buy the similar display driver and the inverter, I have given the link for both in the description. For the rest of the construction, I am going to use a 3 4 inch wood which will act as the support, frame and the housing for the driver and the inverter. I started with cutting the support frame with the same dimension as the LCD panel to keep the footprint small as possible. Then make a small cutout in the middle which will act as the housing for the electronics. I drilled a few holes in the bottom for the plastic stand which will be later included in the build. To separate the LCD panel and the electronics between the cutout, I am going to use this 3mm wood and make some slots and holes to make the wires pass through between the driver and the LCD panel. Once I was happy with it, I moved on to painting. I started with masking the panel, so I can paint the display with the same color as the frame. Then I painted both the display and the cutout with black acrylic paint. Using the isopropyl alcohol, cleaning the display was pretty easy. But for the cutout, that might not be necessary because this part will be concealed by the LCD panel. The assembly was easy as cleaning. Just attach the 3mm wooden sheet on the cutout and screw them in place. Now we can add the electronics onto the pocket that has been created. You can see I also mounted a standoff for the Raspberry Pi, but you know the story why it's not going to be used anyway. Also don't forget to cover up the metal parts of the screws, because this is where the display will be laying on top. Once the insulation is done, lay the LCD panel slowly on the top of the cutout while making sure all the wires are properly reaching the driver and the inverter. Then rest of the electronic assembly was pretty standard. Just connect the wires to the right slots and set up the universal driver. Which might be different for different panels. So I'll put a link in the description which will help you in the setup process. This only partially completes the build. Still we have to deal with the mounting the LCD panel to the frame. To solve this, I quickly jumped into Fusion 360 and made a model which can support the LCD panel with the frame. Then with some large layer height, I started the 3D printing process. When you are ready with all the parts, screw the 3D printed parts to the edge of the LCD panel. Now 
For the stand, I'm going to use this mount which I got with my TV. You can check the link in the description to get a similar one. Once all the assembly was done, it was time for cleaning the LCD panel once again. Finally, this completes the secondary monitor. To power on, supply 12V 4A to the driver board. This should light up the LCD panel and start searching for the HDMI signal by default. Now to test, let me connect a HDMI cable between my laptop and the monitor. And surprisingly, it works so well. The image quality is pretty decent when considering it's a 7 to 8 years old panel. But it's not good enough when compared to a display with an HDR support. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, if you like to support one step ahead of everyone, you can check the link in the description for donation. As always, for more videos, you can check the link on the screen or on my channel page.